everyone welcome back to my channel my name is Kim and today I'm bringing you my unboxing of my Thrill Club subscription box and I believe I have the horror subscription I believe you can do horror thriller or surprise me and I choose the horror books because I've been getting more into the horror genre so I've really enjoyed several of the books that I've gotten so far so let's dive in and see what I got this time Again, I will leave the link down below. It's not an affiliate link, so you just click on it to go if you are interested in purchasing um, the box, and it'll ask you for all of your info, so I'll leave all of that down below. So let's open it up. So this is what it looks like. Again, it's in its traditional red tissue paper, so let me dive in, see what I have, and then I'll be right back with you. So both of these are actually hardback books, so that is a plus. So let's start with this one. This is Nothing to Devour by Glenn Hirschberg, I believe is how you say the name. So this looks interesting. Got a creepy house by, it looks like maybe Ocean on the, on the ledge. So let's see what we have. Librarian, librarian M Amelia is alone in a library that is soon to close its doors forever. Alone save for one last patron, his head completely swathed in bandages, his hands gloved, not one inch of skin exposed. Amelia feels sorry for him. Like her, he is always alone. Today, he sees, really sees, Amelia. What he does to her then is unspeakable. Thousands of miles away, another victim rises, a dead woman who still lives. So Sophie is determined to protect the people she loves best in the world, but she is a monster. To Jess, it doesn't matter that Sophie was once as close to her as her own daughter. It doesn't matter that Sophie's baby died so that Jess's grandson could live. It only matters that Sophie is a vampire. Vampires can't be trusted, even if they love you. Aunt Sally loved all the monsters she, she'd created in the hundreds of years since she died and rose again. She loved her home in the bayou. When her existence was exposed to the human world, she didn't hesitate to destroy her home and her offspring to save herself. Herself and one special girl, Aunt Sally's last chance to, to be a per perfect mother. These people are drawn together from across the United States, bound by love and hatred, by the desire for reunification and for revenge. In their own ways, they are all monsters. Some deserve to live, some do not. Nothing to devour is their story. Wow, so that is very intriguing. A lot of different points of view looks like it's going to happen in this book, so hopefully I can keep up. But very intriguing, for sure. Okay. And then the second book that came in this book box, this is A Noise Downstairs by Linwood Barkley. So this is what this one looks like. All right, Be Afraid. College professor uh, Paul Davis is a normal guy with a normal life. But that normal existence is turned upside down late one evening when he spots his colleague, Kenneth, driving in a suspicious manner along a deserted road. Curious and concerned, Paul follows Kenneth and catches him in a horrifying act, trying to dispose of two dead bodies. That was eight months ago. After nearly losing his own life that night, Paul is battling PTSD, depression, and severe problems at work and home. To cheer him up, his worried wife, Charlotte, gives him a surprise present, a vintage typewriter, complete with ink ribbons and heavy round keys, because he always wanted one. Paul feels inspired to write about the terrifying experience that damaged his life. If I can look into the eyes of evil in the real world, Paul explains, maybe I won't have to run from it in my sleep. However, the typewriter soon becomes a source of anxiety itself. Paul swears he can hear the keys clacking in the early hours of the morning when everyone is in bed. Charlotte and his son deny playing with the old-fashioned machine or hearing any strange sounds. 
It is only Paul who can hear the noises he swears is coming from downstairs. Are Paul's claims real, or is he going off the rails as Charlotte fears? Paul believes that the typewriter is connected to the dark events that night on the post road, and implausible, as implausible as that seems, after all, Kenneth is in prison and he worked alone. So how could the typewriter have anything to do with the crime? Increasingly tormented by determined, yet determined to discover the truth, Paul begins reinvestigating the deaths himself. But that may not be the best thing to do. Maybe Paul should just get rid of the typewriter. Maybe he should stop asking questions and simply walk away while he can. Because if he doesn't, his darkest nightmares just might come true. Wow. These are both really, really intriguing. Very interesting to see which one is better than the other. And I don't know how to make this choice. So this is why I need you guys' help. Which one should I prioritize first? Um, nothing to devour, nothing to devour about, um, about vampires, if I can get my words out tonight, or this creepy, possibly possessed typewriter haunting type of thing and a noise downstairs. So leave me uh, your choice down below, whichever one gets the most um, votes for it, the most times it appears, then that is the one I will prioritize for September. God, it's weird to say September already. So let me know what you think down below. Have you read either of these two books or any of these two authors? And until my next video, I hope you have a good one. Bye.